It's time to rethink, renew, and reimagine retirement. Hey everybody, Jared Sebesta here, co-host of Retire Repurposed. On behalf of Bentagious and myself, we are so glad that you are joining us here today. Retirement is a big life change. We say oftentimes it's the second most dangerous day of your life following the first day of your life. But retirement can be much more than that. It isn't the end. It can be the beginning of a new life, a better life, and a more impactful life. Well, today we continue our series where we are talking about time. Statistically speaking, a 65-year-old retiree will have roughly 20 more years of life. Now, that may sound like a lot. However, if you break down that time into life experiences, the results are much different. It's not that much time. In this podcast, Ben Tages uses data to reveal some startling facts about how retirees are actually using their time compared to what society says retirement is all about. Enjoy this episode. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the show. We're so glad that you're joining us here on Retire Repurposed. If you're new to the show, I say this uh, almost at the beginning of every episode. We speak a different language here. Yes, this is a, a podcast on retirement. And if you go on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and you search retirement, you will get literally hundreds or even thousands of podcasts out there. Most of those are dedicated to the financial side. And yes, we'll talk about finances occasionally or financial concepts on this show, but this show is all about life and retirement, your life, living a purposeful life, living an impactful life. So if that uh, resonates with what you are into, if you are of retirement or even pre-retirement age and that's the kind of life you want in retirement, then you have certainly come to the right place. Well, we started a brand new series uh, last week and we're gonna talk specifically about our framework, which is time, talent, and treasure. But we're gonna spend a lot of shows just talking about the concept of time. What is it? What is it about time that makes it so important? How can you best utilize your time? How can you make the most of your time as a retiree? Last week's show was actually titled Time and Toilet Paper. Ben Tages joins me on the show now, and this is uh, that's a title that we, we, we threw around, and it's the one that stuck to the wall, but why don't you give people that maybe missed last week's show uh, a little insight as to why we came up with that title. Yeah, Jared, it's a concept that, and we all we all felt it. I think that as things start to disappear, as you as you feel like you're um, running out of time, it just goes faster. And you know, I, I use that analogy of you know your your the toilet paper roll is it for some reason right at the end, it just whoop all of a sudden it's gone, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think that's what I want to make sure people think about. Um, maybe not time and toilet paper, but the analogy of that, you know, when that roll is full, it feels like you've got so much left, and then right at the end, it just goes really, really quick. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of retirees get in that that feeling of, man, I am running out of time, and I get the feeling that things go quicker as I age. Yeah, if, if you missed last week's show, we talked about uh, kind of how ways that you can almost feel like you're slowing down time. Uh, we talked about the difference between Kronos and Kairos time. We talked about the difference of Einsteinian and Newton time. So if you missed last week's show, go back and listen to it because we really set the stage for how we're going to uh, set up these next couple of shows and this next series really on time. So go back and check that out. So on today's show, Ben, we're going to talk about how much time do you really have left as retiree? We're going to break down some statistics. We're going to break down some studies. We're going to talk about some numbers. And we're going to talk about how how retirees are actually spending their days. Before we do that, let's just talk about this idea of time. Uh, you've gotten in the habit of, of meeting with clients in our financial business and asking them a specific question regarding this idea of time. And, and again, do a little review for people that have missed, missed that in the past. Yeah, if you, if you look at our logo, uh, there's three T's baked right into it. And a lot of people think that stands for Tatious Financial Group, you know, my, the, the first letter of my last name, and it doesn't. It never has. It's always been about lots help people steward what what we see as the most important uh, pieces of life, and that's time, talent, and treasure. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I love to do with clients is I like to sit down and say, okay, of those three T's, once you understand that it isn't have anything to do with my last name, it has everything to do with helping you steward your life, which of those three T's is most important to you? Is it your time, talent, or treasure? And asking that question now for 15, 20 years, I've never heard anybody give me any answer other than time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why do you think that that is? I, I, again, I think it's fairly, I don't want to say trivial or or uh, obvious, but 
Is it because of the age bracket at that time? Is it because maybe people have more wisdom by the time they, they are reaching, you know, an age where they're working with, with, with us and, and, and planning out their retirement? Why, why do you think that that's on everybody's radar? Such an obvious answer. Well, it's some, something to do with it, right, is, is we do start to feel as if um, – we, we understand what's really mattered in our life. Mm-hmm. Um, you go to a funeral, you go to a memorial service of some kind, and you, nobody's talking about money, okay? Nobody's talking about the treasure piece. Nobody's really talking much about talent. It's, it's always about the time spent with somebody. Now, mm-hmm. the second place one is almost always talent, and we'll get into that in future shows yeah. and why that's 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 right up there with time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the key here is, is the last one is always the treasure, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's the reality that when people sit down and they really contemplate life and they say, what was I chasing? What was this world telling me was the most important of those three? It comes down to treasure. And that I've never heard. I've never heard anybody say, you know, Ben, of all those three T's, I always, I think treasure is the most important to me Mm -hmm. because it just never is. Money is almost always um, the last of those three items that people talk about. And, you know, that's really what it is. Money is, it's, it's the means to an end, right? Mm-hmm. It's never can be the goal yep. or, or what we're trying to strive for. And I think that's what our society messes with people many times and why in our industry, many people talk more about the money than anything else. And we should be focusing on is, yeah, there's financial strategies that are important, but it yep. starts with the time. Yeah. And that's the irony in our business is that so much time, effort and energy is spent focused on the financial things. And and uh, we would even say and we've covered this on past shows, how that actually uh, tends to almost change how people look at their life, how they understand their value. They start putting their value in their bank account, which is an awful place to put their value. So all of these concepts are kind of all coming together as we talk about time, talent and treasure. Uh, let's talk about how much time do people actually have left? Again, let's look at some studies, shall we? Uh, one concept you have to understand is that the, the, the longer you live, the longer your average life expectancy goes up. The, the normal, I don't say normal, but the average longevity uh, for most humans in America is something around 70s to around 80, depending on what study you look at and, and when the study was done. But the latest statistic that I, that I found regarding a 65-year-old person, and again, I'm using 65 because that's kind of the, 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 the standard retirement age, so we'll just kind of go with that. But the reality is, Ben, is that if you reach 65 years old, uh, you can expect to live up to 86 years old on average if you're a female and 83 years old if you're a male. So again, let's just kind of throw some numbers on the wall. If you're retiring at 65 years old, all things considered, you can expect to live 20 more years. What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like a lot of time? What, do, what, do, what does that sound like to the life of a retiree at 65 years old? Well, it certainly sounds like I've got less ahead of me than what was behind me. Jared, and I think that's always the the concept. That's always what people start to realize is like I have less time left on this earth than than I, I did before, and they start to begin to look at their time kind of slipping away. And that's with anything, right? That can be a younger person with time with a, a daughter leaving their house, right? And time slips away. I think we talked about that last show, and I said I'm gonna I'm gonna do some math there, and I did, Jared. I, I thought how much time do I have with my my senior at home still? And as of this recording, it's almost February. So I've got, I figure from February till maybe September. So give or take eight months, which means, with, you know, with about 30 days in a month, I've got about 240 days, which breaks down to about 5,760 hours. Okay. Sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot of time. Yeah. But when I start to do it, and this is what I would like listeners to do with their own life, but I start to break it down to how much time do I have with her? Mm-hmm. That's where it gets interesting. Because let's say that I have 17 awake hours each day, right? That means I'm down to 4,080 hours, okay? And let's say that I spend, you know, even just one hour a day with her, really. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's that's really only 240 hours. Which is quite a bit, actually, when you think about it, like it, one-on-one time. It, it is, which is rare. I mean, yeah. do I have one hour, right. one hour a day of one-on-one time with my daughter? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I don't. Right. But even there, if I take that 240 hours and I say, how many? How much is that in days? That's 10, if I had them all at once, that's right. 10 days, yeah. really, with her in my home. Yeah. And I think when people think about their lives that way, mm-hmm. as they think about, yeah, I've got 20 years left. I've got 20 years, but how much time do I have with the stuff that matters? How many of those 20 years will actually be spent with the loved ones that I know that matter, mm-hmm. right? How many, t- how, how many hours does that break down to? So, yes, 20 20 years sounds like an awful lot of time mm-hmm. but when we break it down to how much time we're actually spending of those 
hours that yeah. are left in our life with the people that matter, it ends up looking like less and less each day that passes. And that's definitely one thing that we want to uh, encourage people to understand with this show is to just bring some awareness to um, their time, bring some intentionality to it. Um, I, I also saw a statistic that's been out there floating around, but by the time uh, your kids reach the age of 12, uh, you've you've already spent 70%, 75% of the time you'll ever spend with them. By the time they reach 12, that's... <laughs> Jared, that, are you that's trying summer. to make me cry on air well, here? I mean, you know, but the reality is it's true. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have we have, we have have only so much time with them. Yeah. Oh. And I've got I've got an 11-year-old daughter at home, and I, you definitely notice that shift. And I, I obviously, again, we're, we're, to, we're, we're talking as two middle-aged men here, not retirees, but uh, one of my kids just turned 11 last year, and you definitely notice a shift where this, this particular daughter of mine was is a daddy's girl and you just, you kind of, you can, I don't say slipping away, but you can feel like the amount of times that you spent together reading books, sitting in my lap, um, those get uh, more and more distant. And that's, that's a little sobering to take. Yeah. It, it's sobering. As I do these shows, I get more intentional. I'm a little worried about my, my younger daughter. I got two years left with her and I'm sure she's like, Oh she boy, smothered. <laughs> <laughs> super smothered time. Yeah. But I think for our retirees listening, I mean, when, when you sit down and you have that moment of, okay, 20 years left or 10 years, uh, you know, last show I talked about my client who was, who was 86 years old and said, Hey, I got till 90, you know, that's four years left. And, uh, when I asked him, I said, how does that hit you? He came back with, well, hopefully the same, you know, I, I process that the same way you should process your time, Ben. Nice. You don't know if you got four years that's left or, or 40. So I think we have to be just very, very, um, aware of how much time we have left and then make the absolute most of it. Yep. And that's what today's show is about. There, there was a study done by the Bureau of Labor Statistics back in 2019. And I found this and I, I thought that this was just fascinating. And I think that it, it really holds a, a place that we need to uh, put it on a pedestal and break this down and talk about it on today's show. But this was a, was a study done on how people spend their time broken down by different demographics, age brackets, uh, what have you. And so when you look at this particular study on on retirees specifically, people like 65 and older, there were some things that really, really struck uh, stuck out. And, and let's spend some time here, Ben, and, and talk about this. The first thing that it mentioned is that the life of a retiree, how a retiree spends their day pre-retirement versus post-retirement at the end of the day really wasn't that substantially different. We think that like, oh my goodness, you're getting you're getting decades back to your life. You're retiring at 65, you've got 20 years left. Retirement just gave you 20 years. You know what it did? It gave you eight hours a day back. That's really what it what it said. And again, one thing that struck uh, stuck out in in this is that the life of a retiree before and after retirement, for the most part, didn't really look all that much different. Is that accurate from some of the things that you've seen over the years of helping retirees? What would how would you put that that statistic in check in your head? Very, very accurate, Jared. I think um, most people think when they retire, their life is going to look completely different. And it, and it doesn't. Um, I think most people um, end up retiring and their lives look very much the same. The key is, is what are you doing with those eight hours, yeah. right? Um, most of the time, people, uh, they have these these grand illusions that they're going to travel the world and they're going to spend, you know, so much more time with their family and they're going to, it's freeing up their time to do all this mm-hmm. stuff. And many times that 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 illusion does not become reality. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's so interesting how retirement is sold. Again, if you, if you just search retirement, by the way, <laughs> we've challenged you to do this on the show before. Try it. Just Google retirement and then click over onto the images and, and, and tell me what you see you will see uh, retirees on a beach on a yacht smiling laughing hanging out um, collecting seashells on a ship it's it's almost comical because that is how it is sold and there was one time ben i think it was like a year and a half ago I, that, that epiphany hit me and i came in to work that day and i said look at this image ben how many of our retirees have actually done this and you said emphatically zero because he's like you, you're like that's just not what they what they want to do it it just it just doesn't look that much different the study goes on to say, how are then retirees really spending that time? Okay, so their life really isn't that much drastically different. What they got back was a block out of their day to do what they want to do. Most of that time was dedicated to more leisurely activities, relaxing, reading a little bit, spending more time with friends. But this is where it got really interesting. Of the block of time given back to retirees once they retired, according to the study, almost six hours, 5.42 hours to be exact, was spent now watching television. How's that hit you, Ben? Ouch. 
I mean, right. I mean, I, I personally uh, do spend too much time in front of a screen, and I know most of us do. Um, but when you read that and you think of that, you know, eight hour block or whatever they're getting back in their day, such a large percentage of it is spent on something that will absolutely not matter, mm-hmm. right? I can tell you emphatically that all the other things, socializing, other stuff you could do, the, the lowest priority thing for most people should be time in front of a television at this mm-hmm. point. And I'm guilty of it too. I know if you're listening to this, you're like, yeah, my screen time's up. And, and you know, whether it be your phone or, or you know, your tablet or, or actually television, it's unbelievable the amount of time waste that that is for people. And I, and I think um, hearing that statistic mm-hmm. should should be just a an eye-opener for yeah. many people. Yeah, it, 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 should, it should hit you, hopefully, the way that it hit us. Because when I, when I saw that and read that, um, I, I just thought what, and I don't, I mean this with all due respect, but what a waste, what a waste of time, um, of the eight hours given back, almost six hours of it was spent watching television, 44 minute, minutes of that, of that eight hour block on average was, was given towards socializing. That's really, really good. I would say that that, that's a, that's a, that's a fair point and, and something that needs to be commended. But here's the, the other one that really caught me of the eight hours given back per day, 3.6 minutes of it on average was dedicated to travel. Again, do a do a juxtaposition on what is what is uh you know kind of portrayed as the typical retirement versus actual t- statistics and how they're spending their time. Yeah, all you see on the brochures and all we talk about and most people as as we're planning our our retirement, so I'm going to travel, I'm going to spend most time with family, etc. And what you actually see based on this study is the exact opposite. 3.6 minutes of that time, a tiny tiny fraction of what you're hoping to get back to travel yeah. and and relax actually was spent uh traveling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's it's a um, it's an eye opener. Yeah, yeah. Time with kids, time with friends, averages about an hour a day pre and post retirement. That really, for the most part, does not change. In fact, it tails off just a little bit as you go deeper into your sixties and your seventies. Which again, you know, uh, you know, uh, suggests that the life pre retirement, post retirement doesn't look a ton different. Yeah. What what you just said there, Jared. We have to slow down and make sure people hear that point, mm-hmm. right? So yes, travel went up slightly, minutes, very slightly, yeah. minutes, barely noticeable. <laughs> yeah. But time spent with family. Mm-hmm. And time, like some people have that retirement goal of like, all I'm going to do is spend time with my grandkids. Mm-hmm. You have to realize that most of the time that does not happen, right? It Your retirement plan cannot be, I want to be just pour into my kids and grandkids because they have their own lives. They have their own things. Now, can we be intentional sure. with that time? Yeah. And can we make the most of it with them? I'm saying yes, 100%. But what people need to hear is that most of the time they don't retire and all of a sudden become, you know, grandpa and grandpa, grandpa and grandma of the year. And all they do is spend time with, with their family. Mm-hmm. And we've had past shows. We talk about this. It has to be done intentionally. Yeah. You have to make sure you ask your kids and grandkids how you can best be in their lives. Mm-hmm. But what we're seeing based on statistics is that just because you have more time left, right? You have more time of your day left. Mm-hmm. It generally does not greatly change how much that time is spent with kids and grandkids. I think it's a it's a noble goal, and I certainly applaud retirees for wanting that. But the reality is, is that very little of that time um, really comes to fruition with really um, kids and grandkids. We'll talk about what we can do uh, to fix that here in just a couple of minutes. But another staggering, if, if, if you haven't been punched in the gut yet, check this out. When it comes down to hours spent on educational activities, learning, reading, growing, this study said that literally it was down to zero minutes a day that retirees now spend growing. Holy cow. Jared, I think people need to hear that. Absolutely. The biggest thing that changes when people retire is that they stop learning. And their jobs allowed them to learn, allowed them to create, allowed them to do things with their hands to make a difference. And we see people age more from the act of retirement mm-hmm. than just getting older. Yeah, and, and again, I think that that is a, a really good point. You may not have had a job where you were learning new skills and, and you know, in, in, in growing in that respect, but at the very least, your job gave you it gave you some outlet to, um, you know, platform your, you know, your talents and your experiences. And that that's kind of part of the equation as well. 100%. We started this section of the show saying, you know, that, that 
retiring gave you eight hours or so a day back. Mm -hmm. The question is, what did it take? And I think that's what people need to Mm -hmm. think about last. Yeah. Well, we got about five minutes left here. Let's spend the next five minutes and kind of talk about what people can do. What can retirees do to best utilize that time? The first point, Ben, goes back to what we just talked about. You have to be a learner. You've got to dedicate yourself to growing. Ben, in, in your opinion, what does that look like? How can people use that extra eight hours a day and actually grow? What What are some examples that people can do? Well, you got to try new things, Jared. I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about having the extra time back is you can try things that you never thought you'd enjoy, right? Um, there's so many examples in history of people that turned out to be um, really talented at, at different things that their job never allowed them to try, mm-hmm. right? Um, you think of uh, George W. Bush became actually a pretty decent painter a, as he aged, yeah. and that was something he just needed something to do. Yeah. Um, there's so many examples just like that, and I would encourage listeners to say, keep your mind sharp by don't letting it age. Don't let your mind age. Mm. Become somebody who is always learning new things. And uh, with that extra eight hours, spend, you know, I would say not half of it, but a good chunk of it trying out new activities. Yeah. And you're going to fail. You're going to see things that you absolutely don't like. Mm-hmm. That's okay. When things when things stick, right, and your mind comes alive and you start to learn again, mm-hmm. that's when you'll start to feel younger. Never stop learning. That's point number one. Second point we want to talk about is having specific plans. We've talked about this in previous shows really recently. We're at the beginning of a year. Holy cow. Uh, just because you're retired doesn't mean that you get a free pass and you can just kind of live each day with, with, with no specificity or intentionality, right? Yeah, I mean, you got to think now more than ever, you need specific plans, things to look forward to, and things that make sure your days don't just lump together, right? Your job gave you those guardrails. It gave you things to look forward to. It gave you things like vacations, Mm -hmm. right? Came from you looking forward to not going to work that day. But you had to have the work to look forward to the vacation. So when I look at what's most important in retirement, it's learning, yes, but it's specific plans to each day. Mm -hmm. That each day should be engineered with certain things in in that day so that they don't just fall right to the next. Part of that's journaling, part of that's making sure your personal gratitude, so many specific examples. But the key is, is you need a specific plan to each day, to each month, Mm -hmm. each quarter, each year. Yeah. Yeah. Just a couple of shows ago, I gave some uh, examples on how you could have a stellar year. And there were three big ones. First of all, you have to have um, a signature event each year, you should be able to look back and say, okay, 2023, bam, that was the year we did X, Y, and Z. 2022, bam, that was the year we went X, Y, and Z or did whatever. You know, that needs to be on the books. And it's not, if it doesn't, if you don't plan it, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and so that needs to get on the calendar. What do you want your, your, your kind of your signature event to be this year? We broke that down into quarters, you know, having little mini adventures. You should have, you said this a thousand times, been on the show, you should have something to be looked forward to every single quarter. It should be, it doesn't necessarily have to be a week long vacation, but something to look forward to. And then try to develop a new healthy habit every quarter. If you just do those three things, uh, you're going to have a stellar year and you will be growing and you won't be kind of falling into this trap that so many retirees fall into. Ben, another point people need to do, and again, you've alluded to it already, dream big. Why don't we do this anymore? Why is it just accepted in America that now this part of your life is now over? Well, I think it's because America keeps telling you that that your life is over, right? It's, it's you're retired and now it's time to kind of move out of the way, let the young people do what they're going to do. And you're kind of past your prime, if you will. And I I don't believe that, Jared. I think, you know, C.S. Lewis said it really well, and I, I love this quote. He said, you are never too old to set a new goal or dream a new dream. Too many times it's like, yeah, goal setting is for young people, right? Mm-hmm. Dreaming is for young people. And I believe that that the older people should dream a new dream, mm-hmm. right? Set a new a vision. And younger people can follow that mm-hmm. and I think learn a lot from them. So I'm all about people that are in retirement being visionary yeah. still in that age. I, I can just think of different people in my life that are of retirement age, the ones that are growing, they're still dreaming, they're still going after life, and then the people that have just kind of accepted the fact that they're getting older. And again, with all due respect to all, all the people in my life that are of that age, there is, there is definitely uh, a mindset that is different from one to the other. Ben, we got about 30 seconds left. What's kind of a, a final point that we can put a put a ribbon on this on this podcast that people need to hear? Well, I think they need to hear that God put you on this earth for a specific reason. God didn't say when you retire, your purpose on life is over. He didn't say, yep, we, we have got 65 good years for you, and then you just kind of fade off in the sunset. Now, John Piper has a great book, Don't Waste Your Life. 
And I feel like too many times retirees get in this point of where now we're retired. You can start to focus on you. You can start to focus on your own needs. And some rest and relaxation we know is important. But I think the important thing retirees need to hear is that God's not done with you yet. And he has a specific plan for your retirement years. Securities offered through Avantax Investment Services, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Avantax Advisory Services. Insurance services offered through an Avantax-affiliated insurance agency.